thank God who has the power to raise the dead. Coming quick in your mortal body by the power of His Word. So shall my word be that goeth forth out of my mouth. It shall not return forth. It shall prosper in the day where I say, Hallelujah, it shall come alive. For he called those things which be not as though they were. Displacing your faith in a living God. Which is healed the gods and his Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. And open up your heart to the living God and let God have his way.
Merry Christmas, Happy New Year's. Amen. This is the reason for this season. It's about Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. I was praying about this and I've been thinking about it for a while, but I know in the next 10 days would be a good time, even in this busy season, to take time and put aside and begin to pray and seek God and uh, prepare us for a New Year's miracle rally. Start on the New Year's Eve on the 31st of December, then go to Saturday night, at December the 1st, I mean not January the 1st, and then January the 2nd. And let's just have a, East, have a, a New Year's miracle rally. You know, there needs to be a lot of miracles taking place today. There's so many people that are caught in crisis and circumstances. They're physically having physical problems. They need a miracle to touch their lives, to be healed and set free. Um, emotionally stressed out in circumstances. A lot of fear and worry about what's going to come on this earth. But the main thing is for us to realize today that, uh, that God's on the throne. And God wants to touch the lives of everyone, even you that are watching on YouTube. Take some time and pray and put yourself aside and get alone with God. And begin to present your needs before the living God and let God begin to speak to you in this time of season. And when we come to the New Year's Eve rally on the 31st of December, let something ignite inside of you for the next three nights. Let the same spirit that raised Jesus from the dead quicken your mortal body and realize that all things are possible to them that believe in, in Jesus. Amen. Now I know that there's a, a story that we all are familiar with, the story about Lazarus. And in this particular part of the story, he had died. You know, when somebody dies, we think it's the end. Looks like this is a totally impossible situation. Perhaps you can also relate to your circumstances that you're facing. It's like something has happened and looks like you're at the end of yourself. Where it's mostly, physically, whatever. It just appears that we have come to an end. You know, you think, well, it's got to be more to life than just ending here. Amen. Amen. It is when we have been setting our faith and we have been praying and believing for a miracle. And whatever we have been praying for is not yet taking place. You know, when that happens, we have the tendency to think that we're at the end of the rope. We think like, that's it, there's no hope. But how do you know that just like Abraham, who against hope, believed in hope, is how we have to look at the circumstances and not be overwhelmed by doubt and by fear and circumstances are beyond our control. That's when we turn to God. That's when we begin to pray to Jesus like Martha and, and Mary were praying, Come Jesus, come lay hands on my brother that she may be healed. Amen. And sometimes when you look at your circumstances, it looks like your circumstances have died. Look like you're at the bottom of the barrel. Look like there's no way you can come out of the situation that you're facing. Hallelujah. So we see in John 11:17 when Jesus came, 
He says he found out that Lazarus had been in the grave for four days. Four days. He's already dead. You're late, brother. Now Bethany was nigh to Jerusalem, about fifteen furlongs off, and many of the Jews have come now to to see Martha and Mary to comfort them concerning their brother. Do you ever notice when you hit the bottom, you get sometimes the people, they say, we're praying for you, we're with you, and they're trying to comfort you in the midst of your situation, and you're not finding no peace at all. It's because there's something missing. You're not still satisfied. You're at the bottom. So you're almost at the point that like, leave me alone. So what happens? Then Martha, as soon as she heard about that Jesus was coming, she went to meet him. Just think about it. As soon as you heard that Jesus was coming, how about the day we're living right now? In the midst of this crisis and hopelessness. And we tell the world, guess what? Jesus is coming. Amen. But there was something that Martha did. She didn't sit at home. She took an effort. She went out to meet him. Amen. Are we taking time to go and reach out for Jesus tonight? To meet with him? Are you ready to pray and seek his face till you find him? It's just like if you seek him with all your heart, you're going to find him. God is not going to come into your situation until you get desperate enough to say, God, I've done everything I know how to do to survive, but now I need a miracle. And sometimes we're looking to ourselves, how am I going to do it? And the more you look at it, the more deeper you seek to seek in your, in your heart and mind, you say, no way I can solve this situation. So you have no choice but to go to God. It's a good place to be. When you can't turn left and you can't turn right and you can't go forward and you can't go backwards, you're stuck in a situation that only God can intervene. It takes the hand of God to intervene, not only in your case this night, but every person who's in the midst of their trial. They need to realize that God is already knowing where you are and he's actually set up your circumstances that you have no choice but to come to him. Amen. So when Jesus came, Mary came to him, Martha came to him, Mary still sat in the house and, and of course when Martha got to Jesus, this is what she said to him, Lord, if you had been here, so my brother had not died. If you had been here, this would have not happened. If you had been in my situation, this should have never happened. This shouldn't happen. This is not normal. Somehow the enemy has come in like a roaring lion, seeking who may devour. And it looks like he's doing a quite a bad job or evil job against us. And we feel like, oh my, where am I? Lord, if you had been here, this would have never happened. Amen. But yet, when she was feeling this, she was accusing Jesus that you, you're late. What are you going to do about this situation? You haven't done anything. I've been praying. I've been talking to you. I even call you to come and pray for Lazarus, right? You're praying God to intervene on your situation and it seems like nothing's happening. Oh my. But notice verse 22, but I know even now. Do we really know even right now that whatsoever you, you will ask God <laughs> that God will give it to you. 
Did you ever stop to think when she made this powerful statement, even now, that if you ask anything from God, he's telling Jesus. You got to realize when you come to Jesus tonight that, you know, God, Jesus can ask anything from his Father. Now, she had a confidence and faith that if Jesus was asked anything from his Father, right, from God, then God would give it to him. And so she had the confidence that Jesus can ask anything from his Father. And so then Jesus answers to her, your brother shall rise again. In other words, you're not at the end of the road. Your situation will rise again. I will raise you back on your feet. Amen. We don't have a Lazarus in our lives, but we should have circumstances just like Lazarus. Amen. And Martha said unto him, I know. Oh yeah, we all believe. He's going to rise again at the resurrection of the last day. How come we're putting it in so far in advance that we can't seem to see the miracle that can happen right now? See, miracles are not faith. It's the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. So in other words, God gives us a promise that if we come to Him with all heart and believe in Him that we can ask anything in His name that He's going to do it. Because he has the authority, he has the power, he can go before the Almighty God and say, you can ask anything from God and God will give it to you. So he says, in your situation, just like with Lazarus, your situation will rise again, you will get back on your feet, I will turn every, your sorrow into joy, I, I will transform your situation and I will make all things possible. But when you stop to think about believing God to make all things possible, we have the tendency to react to looking at the circumstances because in our mind, our circumstances is impossible. Just like last year's situation, who would have ever thought that Jesus is going to raise Lazarus from the dead? When someone dies, it's the end. When something dies, you think there's no hope. And that's where God wants us to realize, stop looking at your own ability and start looking at His. Because God wants you to have faith in His faith and His power. And then humble yourself before Him and say, okay God, I'm going to put my faith in you. Hallelujah. Then Jesus reveals to her, is that the resurrection and the life? Can you imagine? Jesus said, I'm the resurrection and the life. He said, I have the power to resurrect your situation. I have the power to change your circumstances. I even have the power to change your mind. I have the power to put something inside you that will change you. Hallelujah. He says, I'm the resurrection and the life. He says, he that believeth in me. In other words, we got to put our faith in Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. He that believeth in me, though he were dead. You mean by dead? He says, your, your mind, your emotions, your flesh. In how you feel about yourself, you feel like you're dead. You feel like there is no life in you, and that's the truth. Amen. But it says, He that believeth in me, though he were dead, yet shall he live. Amen. And he's not talking about you coming alive. It's not talking about your emotions coming alive, not your flesh coming alive. But it's going to put something inside you that's going to resurrect you from the dead to bring you into a dimension of faith and power that all things become possible. Glory to God. That's a quite a transformation. 
It says all things will pass away and all things become new. We're on the threshold that God is going to have a transformation and a translation from us from the darkness into the light of God. It is time that God brings us to the, to the place that we realize what we cannot do, God can do. Amen. We need to realize that we must be willing to surrender all of our hearts so God can move by His Spirit and give us a new start within our hearts. Sometimes we can be satisfied with our circumstances. Sometimes we learn to live with ourselves. Sometimes we learn to live in our crisis and, and, and circumstances that we kind of get used to it and we try to endure it. But there is any joy in enduring in a situation when it looks hopeless. There's no joy in that. Hallelujah. But what will happen when this resurrection life comes inside you? That even though you may feel like you're at the end of yourself, even though you may look like you're at the end of everything that you're going through, Amen. Amen. He says, He that believeth in me, though he were dead, yet shall he live. It is here where we need to recognize that God is about to do something that's supernatural. That's going to happen because only God can do this. If we can do this, we don't need God. You know, even the most richest people in the world think that they got everything under their control because they have the money, but when it comes right down to it, they're going to realize that only God can give that grace. Only God can intervene. And only God can make everything new. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise God. Glory to God. He said, who's ever living and believeth in me? In other words, you want to have the key to see your situation change? Who's ever living and believeth in me? In other words, he's talking about entering into his life. But this also means that if you're going to live in him and you're going to believe in him, you have to enter into that life. You have to enter into a life that knows no defeat. To enter into a compassion of the mercy and the love of God, that God can change you. Whosoever liveth in this life and believeth in me. Amen. He says, I shall never die. Can you imagine never dying? Of course, we know when we die, we go to heaven and never and we'll live forever. But I'm talking about while we're here on earth. Whosoever liveth and believeth in me. In other words, they'll never die. So you're never going to die in the midst of your crisis. You're never going to lose faith. You're not going to give up on anything only because you're going to believe in that power that raised Jesus from the dead. Amen. And you believe that power is inside you. You believe that God can help you overcome every obstacle and hinders and weakness that you have in your mind and, and your soul. When Jesus mentioned this to Martha, she said to him, Lord, Yes, Lord, I believe that you are the Christ. I believe you are the Son of God which should come into this world. I honestly believe that you are who you are. You're the resurrection and the life. You're the one that has all power in heaven and earth. You rule over all the kingdoms of this world. And there's might and power. Who can stand against you? We must recognize that there is a power that is in Jesus Christ that's going to change you and heal you and set you free. The healing that starts, starts within your heart. It starts with your emotions. 
We're the victims of our circumstances. We've been wounded over the things on our lives. We have weaknesses and things in our lives that only God can change. We have things that God wants to heal you and, and make you free. But all those things are rooted deep in our hearts and it's like scars and wounds in your emotions and your heart. And they're not healed and you're, you're suffering with the struggle and the pain you carry within you. Yet Jesus is calling us to come to Him and believe in Him and trust in Him till He can transform you, till He can heal you and resurrect you from the dead. Hallelujah. Causing the old circumstances to pass away and all things become new. It's like opening the doors to the heaven and to the heavenly manifestation of His glory can come down from heaven and fill us. How desperate are we? Are we ready to believe that who He is? He's the Christ, the Son of the living God. He's the one that God sent to come into this world. Are we ready to say, God, we want to take the limits off ourselves and, and we start putting our faith in You and we're going to stop looking at our crisis and circumstances and, and the frailness of our circumstances. Because we can wallow in grief and our sorrows and beating ourselves up every day and saying, because I'm struggling within myself. When all this time you could be with God, all this time you could surrender and humble under the mighty hand of God and He can lift you up. But for Him to lift you up, you have to let go of yourself. You have to let go of your circumstances. You got to lay aside those things that you feel in your situation. Those imaginations and thoughts that are constantly warring against you. Trying to bring you into captivity, the bondage that you're in. You see, we got to go beyond ourselves. We got to open our heart to God who's going to give us a new start. Amen. Because you want to see a new start, it's only God who can give you a new start. Amen. Thinking about in the next 10 days, if we would set ourselves aside and, you know, right away, we'd say, what do you mean, set aside for the next 10 days? He said, don't you know that Christmas is here? Don't you know we're going to get the family get together? Well, how about getting a together with your Heavenly Father? How about getting a time alone with Him and say, God, I, I'm tired of my situation. Christmas is not going to change my situation. Having dinner and, and getting fat on turkey and all that stuff is not going to change my situation. So there is something that we need to do in the next 10 days to pray and seek His face. And I want a spiritual breakthrough. I want the same Spirit that raised Jesus from the dead to come and put in my mortal body. I want God to heal me and set me free. Let me come alive in the Holy Ghost. And let me put my total dependence on you. So we can see the hand of God move. So why 10 days? It took 10 days for the disciples to get into the upper room and pray and seek and wait on God till God poured out His Spirit upon all, all in Jerusalem in that day. It took them 10 days to humble themselves, to, to, to come before God and ask Him forgiveness for even for Peter to say that I denied you, Lord, three times. It had to get that that guilt and that condemnation and that bondage where, where he felt that wasn't worthy to serve God anymore. He had to come to the place that he needed to be released from the captivity of his heart, the captivity of his mind, because he knew in himself there's no way I can overcome this thing in my life. He had to conquer his fear. He had to conquer his doubt. He had to conquer not be afraid to face the people to bring in the love of God into their lives. You see, the love of God had to come alive inside of him as long as he was struggling with himself like the rest of the disciples. 
They were all in the place of being isolated and hiding and praying before God. Something had to happen to their hearts. The same spirit that raised Jesus from the dead. The resurrection life had to come and baptize them in the Holy Ghost and fire. Hallelujah. So they took 10 days to prepare themselves for a breakthrough. And they wasn't looking for a breakthrough just to, to heal headaches and a few little signs and wonders. They were looking for a transformation of having the same life that raised Jesus from the dead to come into their hearts and minds. And so that they can believe it and live it in heaven that we will never die. Glory to God, we're talking about getting a breakthrough. And thank God we don't have to pay the price that Jesus did because he's the only one that died. He died for us. He came, he that do no sin became a sin for us that we might become the righteous of God. What an exchange. But the exchange will happen until you're willing to lay down your life. Will you tell you, say, God, you can have my life, and I'm going to give my life to you, and I'm going to do things your way instead of my way. So ten days they prayed and seek the face of God. Amen. In especially in the time of season we're in. Hallelujah. And God is wanting us to have a heart change and a life change and a mind change. He wants us to enter into that newness of his life. Hallelujah. Just like Martha says, I believe you are Christ. We believe he's the Christ. We believe he's the son of the living God. He's the one that came into the world. Amen. And he's here tonight. He's here tonight. He's here to help you, not to condemn you. He's here to heal you. He's here to wash you and set you free from you. Biggest struggle is with ourselves. Tonight it's time for us to set our faith in God. All right. Somebody's calling, but it's a wrong number. I'm in the middle of a service right now. I'll call you after. Okay. Yes, Right. There we go. No, turn my phone off. <laughs> I tell people to turn their phone off. Here, my phone is on. Anyway, to the Lord of God. It's time for us to set our faith in the faith that is in God. It is not something that you're trying to muster up your faith to believe in yourself. Because we're talking about grabbing a hold of a faith that knows no defeat. The faith that can raise the dead. The faith that can heal the broken heart. Like the Spirit of the Lord God was on Jesus because He was anointed Him to heal the broken heart. Who has not been broken in the midst of the circumstances of our lives? And how many of us have things that were wounded in our heart that needs to be healed and which Jesus bore when He died on the cross? Amen. When he died on the cross, he did it for you and me. And we got to let him do the miracle healing in our hearts so we can be free from ourselves. And it makes it so much easier so we're able to trust, we're able to have faith, we're able to unite together in the love of God and form this love inside of us that we can now apply this love in everything we're living in, in our homes, in our families with our neighbors, hallelujah, and share that good news, how God loves them. But the question will come if you can believe all things are possible to them that believe. Are we willing to believe tonight? Hallelujah. Are we willing to say yes, Lord? Whatever it takes. When we got to come to the cross in our lives, we got to come to the place of surrender. Laying down our circumstances, our wounds and memories and things that haunts us. That tells us we cannot have a new start in life. No matter what circumstances we are facing. 
no matter what we be going through in our lives, it is to set our faith in the faith that is in the faith of God, knowing that Jesus today has the power and the authority to set you free. Amen. There's nowhere else where you can be set free except through Jesus. Like Mary said and Martha said, I know that even now, do you know even now as you're humbling before God that Jesus, whatever you will ask God, God will give it to you. Jesus was not asking for himself. But Jesus was asking for Martha and Mary. And he was asking for Lazarus. He was not only asking for them. He was asking his father to reveal his life to them. Amen. He says, he said, I've got to prove to these people that who I am. I will prove to them that I'm the resurrection and the life, not just declaring words. Because he is the resurrection and the life. And to prove a point, he demonstrated by raising Lazarus from the dead. How is he going to prove himself to you when he changes you? But before you can change you, you've got to give up yourself. You're going to lay it down. It seems so hard, a struggle, because we want to hold on to ourselves. I've got to be me. Me, me, me. I want to be me. I want to have my ways. And God said, but if you want what I have for you, you've got to give up your ways. Amen. 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 It's not like he says, it's not living. He say changing the life that you're living in. Instead of living in your weakness, you live in his strength now. Let the weak say, I'm strong. Hallelujah. To place our faith in Jesus. To place our faith in the faith of God. Today we can ask anything in his name. Can you imagine? In the name of Jesus Christ. We can ask anything in his name. A blind man said, I want to see. And the blind man began to see. What is it that you want him to do for you? He wants you to ask him. Anything. Anything. You got to realize when you're asking for something that is impossible. You know. Like last was raising from the dead. And God has the power to change the circumstance that he can completely wash it away. Amen. What's impossible with us? Because if we look at the situation, the things that we're facing, God, through, I don't think we want to change the situation. Just leave me alone. But while you're struggling with that, leave me alone. You know that God has the power to change the situation. That even though you feel like leave you alone, God can make it new. God can do the impossible. But He said, How? It's through Him. But before He can do it, it's to start with you. To surrender our heart to that. To yield ourselves to His Spirit. It is for us to believe that all things are possible with God. Amen. And believe all things is possible with Him. Amen. He didn't ask for you to believe for yourself. He wanted you to believe He had the power. That all things are possible with Him. And right now we get stuck and I'm trying to believe and I'm trying to reach out and I'm doing everything in my power but see my nothing's happening. 
It's because you're trying to believe and you're trying to do the changes and, and I even heard people that, 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 that need some miracle in their body and says, well I've been believing and I've been praying and nothing's happening. Well you got to go beyond yourself. you got to go to the one who has the power to heal you. His name is Jesus. Hallelujah. Glory to God. No matter what you say, face it. Just remember, God is greater than all your circumstances. When we set our faith in Jesus, remember, He has all power in heaven and earth. Do you understand? People are panicking what's happening in the world right now. Did you ever stop to realize that Jesus has the power with one word to change everything? Amen. But before he does that, he's going to wait till you get to the point that you want to see a change in your own life. Because if he would fix it up for you, you still wouldn't change your heart. If everything would be cleared up right now in an instant, you would not put your faith and trust in Him. See, God is using the circumstance to bring you to the end of yourself, to the bottom, like you're back against the wall. Like He's bringing you to the end of yourself and say, are you ready to change now? Are you ready to give up your life? You can have my life. He has the power to set us free. And he is wanting to do it so desperately, but he's only one that's stopping is it's you. As long as we, it's like a man that's drowning in, in, in a lake. We'll try everything in this power to stay afloat, to try to save himself. Until they come to that last time they go down, and then finally give up and say, that's it, I can't make it. And it's like they give up. And that's when they begin to sink. And it's then Jesus sends the lifeguard and was able to save him. But before that, he can't save him because, because you're not ready to surrender. It's like you surrendered your life into the hands of God. Stop looking at yourself, I'm not good enough. Stop looking at yourself and all your shortcomings and failures. Stop splashing in the water trying to survive. Surrender. Give it all to Him instead of wrestling with yourself and trying to stay afloat and somehow manage without Him. The key truth is to believe in Him. That he is the resurrection and the life. To know that God has the power to call those things which were not as though they were. One word from God will change your whole future. And the change, when he gives it to us, happens in our heart. It's so simple, really. Just surrender. You heard that song? I surrender all. I surrender all. All to divine, blessed Savior. I surrender all. Are you at the end of yourself yet? I surrender all. We say that. Let's do it. I surrender all. You see, you're trying to, trying to find happiness in your life, but you're never going to find the happiness you're looking for until Jesus comes in. You will not find the peace in your heart until Christ comes in. You will not discover the love that you always wanted to have that comes into the life of Jesus. And it'll bring happiness into the home and relationship between husband and wife, 
and even those who are looking for this peace and love. You get the fulfillment of what God really wants us to have in the first place. But we got to realize what we have will never get there until we surrender to God. We'll never have that love until we say, I give my life to you because my love doesn't go that far. But your love goes beyond my love. And that love is what God wants to give you. The kind of love that Jesus had when he was laying down his life and he was dying for the sins of the world. He never said a word, but he was willing to become the offering for the sin, to be able to carry your pains and your sorrows and your sickness and diseases. So while he was crying out, hanging on the cross, he said, it's finished now. He put an end to that misery by dying in our place. And all we have to do is just to turn to him and say, Lord, have mercy on me and save me. Lord, have mercy on me and heal me. Amen. No one else can heal what's in the heart but Jesus. Not even the pastor can do that. It's the Holy Spirit that does it. Amen. Then what you will experience that whosoever liveth and believeth in me will never die. This life of his love and peace will never die. You know why? Once you get a taste of it, you do everything in your power to keep it. As long as you're living and believing in it, you have freedom. Amen. And the only struggle you have is with yourself because your, yourself is always interfering with it. Because he wants to get hung up on it all over again. Bring back to your remembrance the things you suffered wrong. Well, God has already erased it out of your mind. It doesn't even exist. That's amazing. God can change you so much. He keep the good and take out the bad. Amen. And also put something more into you that you never had before. And that's when Martha says, I believe who you are. You're the Christ. I want this Christ in my life. Remember the scripture that whosoever believeth in him shall not perish. The days will be in. We'll never survive unless we do that. And we'll not, be, we'll not perish because what's coming on the world. Nothing shall be able to destroy us from this everlasting life of Christ. We're setting ourselves to press and pray for the next 10 days. We're going to seek His face so by the time we come to December 31st, we're going to have a miracle, New Year's miracle rally here for three days. That means we're appointed time. We're going to come before God. We're going to ask God to release His grace and release His power, to release His life into our lives, to resurrect us from the dead. To resurrect our hearts and minds and heal our broken hearts. We're going to set ourselves for the miracle where people that are blind will begin to see. Hallelujah. We're going to set our hearts to, to see the hand of God wake in His church one more time. And pour out His Spirit and, 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 and move like we saw Him move in the days before. When we first got saved. We're returning to that resurrection life because nothing else satisfies. Nothing else that's going to make us happy. Hallelujah. And we're not going to declare defeat no more because your heart will be free. Amen. Your mind will be free. 
And only those who come to this life can be free. Those who refuse to come into it will be miserable like they used to be. But once you surrender that misery in you, all things will pass away. All things become new. Isn't that something? It is a choice. God doesn't force us to give our hearts to Him. It's always a choice. Even when you're saved, it's a choice that whether we want to go deeper in His life. Do you want to have more love or more faith? Do you want to come into the living life of God? Three years ago, I was at the crossroads of my life. I was at the bottom of the barrel. There was something missing in my life. I didn't know what it was. I wasn't raised in Christianity. I didn't believe in God. But that night when God revealed himself to me, came into my heart. But then I had a choice to decide, do I want to have this life come in my life? And when I said I will give my life to you, it's when things change. I will serve you. Without even understanding what was happening, I opened my heart to Jesus and I said to him, I will give my life to Jesus. There ain't nobody in this world can stop me. Because I need you more than ever before. And even tonight you can renew your heart with the same Jesus. You can purpose in your heart whatever it takes, God, I am willing to have a new life come in me. Amen. Even as they were giving an invitation, I had a struggle within myself. Part of me said, yes, I want it. But there was a part of me that said, no, I don't want this. But the moment I made up my mind and says, I will give my life to Jesus, is something left me. Are you ready to say that in your heart tonight? Are you ready to make an exchange? Hallelujah, are you ready to think God give you a new start? Are you ready for God to wash you and cleanse you and set you free? It's a choice. Are you willing to say, God, whatever it takes, I'm going to get myself ready for the New Year's miracle rally. I'm going to pray and seek your face till I get there. Amen. Hallelujah. If you're ready, you can pray with me right now right in your seat. You don't even have to come to the front. Just open up your heart to the living God. And say, Jesus, I humble before you and I ask for your divine intervention in my life. In all my circumstances that are beyond my control. And I lay down my struggles that I have with myself. And I give it to you right now. And I ask you to forgive me. I ask you to cleanse me and set me free from my ways. So I can come into your ways. And I open my heart to you. Right now, Jesus, come into my heart afresh. Even you that are watching on YouTube. You can do this right in your home because there's no one there but you and the Lord. And you can say, here I am, God. Come into my heart. Forgive me. Give me a new start in life. Restore to me everything that the enemy has stolen from me. And recover everything I need.
Many times we may say in our hearts, even right now, you feel you're not good enough for Him. But God says, you're good enough for me because I love you. I lay down my life to die for you. So don't let your discouragement, hopelessness in looking at yourself stop you from opening your heart to Jesus. But ask Him right now. Even if you don't understand, just say, God help me, save me, change me. It's all it takes, amen. Just believe it, amen. Church. 
Okay, so God bless you all. Amen. Be blessed. Hallelujah. Praise God. And God is good. Right, Amen. Amen. Praise God. God bless. And uh, hopefully we'll see you next Sunday morning. Amen. God bless.